Now, there is no single chart I can show you, or even selection of charts that's going to tell you the full story, the definitive story of what's going on in the health system right now. But we can make a start and we get a kind of sneak preview of looking at what's going on. And one of the most striking things is looking at staffing levels versus performance levels or versus output. Um, because what you can see, and this might seem surprising, is that actually there have been considerably more staff uh, in the NHS now than there were back in 2019, so pre-pandemic, particularly in those frontline uh, areas. So nurses, consultants, support staff uh, to clinical staff, senior managers as well, and junior doctors. All of those le staffing levels are up considerably but does that transfer through to actual procedures? Well, no, we're going to bring on procedures. Look at the bars. Those procedures have gone down, OK? So GP appointments, first cancer appointments up, but outpatient appointments, people coming off the waiting list, elective admissions, emergency admissions, all those red bars, they are down. So it's this strange paradox where you've got staffing up and then procedures down. And that's one of the strange things that people are trying to, to, to work out to understand at the moment, as are other kind of metrics of performance. And many of those metrics are similarly depressing. This one just shows you how many people are having to wait uh, for two weeks or indeed more than two weeks uh, for a, consult con a first consultation for cancer. The higher this line is, the more people are not having to wait uh, over a fortnight. So the higher this is, the better things are. And what you can probably make out is that line was actually above where you might hope for it to be up until around kind of, when is that, 2017, 2018. But then even before the pandemic, it was starting to come down a little bit. Then you had COVID and look at this line. So you're going from about 5% of people facing uh, those long waits uh, to about 25% of people. It's a real sign of, you know, those concerns uh, with the UK health system, which, of course, leading to, to worse outcomes for patients, particularly uh, when it comes to cancer. And there are many charts we could look at that show you a similar story in different parts of the health system. One other kind of potential explanation for this, you know, it's not necessarily staffing because we have more staff uh, in hospitals, but maybe it might be something else. It might be a shortage of hospital beds, places to treat people. And typically, this is the kind of range at which we would expect to see long occupancy in hospital beds uh, over the past few years. So that's the typical level. Here's this year we're in at the moment. Look. 2022-23, actually significantly higher than normal. So more people stuck in hospital beds for longer. And what are the explanations for that? Partly it's because it's tougher to get discharged because you've got problems in social care right now, so you don't necessarily have the beds uh, and the care to get to. But partly it's another story, which is we don't necessarily have enough of those hospital beds. And when you look at the big picture here, comparing the UK to other countries around the world, well, it really is stark. The UK has one of the lowest levels of hospital beds per thousand of the population of pretty much any country within the OECD, so the developed world. And I should say, these charts have looked like this for quite some time. The UK had kind of low investment and low hospital beds for, for a long time. Um, and the story when you come to look at things like MRI scanners or CT scanners is even worse. Look, the UK, the very worst in the developed world when it comes to CT scanners. So that's very striking. But if we take a step back and look at overall investment, well, here's a chart you might have seen something like uh, recently. This is showing you capital investment in health. So basically how much the government is investing of putting into the health system. And that kind of grey area is many other countries around Europe. You can see them there. So from Austria uh, and Canada as well. So it's got Canada and the US as well and France uh, too. That's where they are. But the red line is the UK. And you can see up until about 2010, the UK was tracking along more or less mid-table. And then you had austerity. Then you had the big cuts in capital spending. And the UK becomes an outlier. And that's, well, it's pretty stark, isn't it? But here's the thing. If you take a different range of countries and add, for instance, Spain or Japan, both of which have health systems, which some people have said are kind of similar to the kind of beverage style health system that we have in the UK. Look, we'll add them on. And then suddenly that pack is a bit bigger and the UK doesn't look like an outlier anymore. Actually, other countries are lower uh, and the UK just goes from being kind of high mid-table to being quite kind of low mid-table. Not saying that's necessarily a good thing, but it does just underline it. It's a really complex story right now. The thing you can't dispute is the fact that you have some serious problems. The NHS is facing pressure right now and no one is entirely sure whether there is a quick fix for it.